Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. This video is all about starting seeds indoors. It's actually five videos from my other YouTube channel, My First Vegetable Garden. I cover lighting, seed starting mix, containers, watering, and fertilizing. My First Vegetable Garden is really for new gardeners. The videos are longer, a little more detail. So I put timestamps in the video description so you don't have to watch a long video. You can just jump to the parts that you're most interested in. But please check out that other channel, My First Vegetable Garden. And these are the five aspects of seed starting that are really important to make sure you get your seed starts off to a great start. Welcome to My First Vegetable Garden. This series is all about growing plants indoors for the first time. And it'll be an ongoing series for 2024. And we're going to start today with lighting. I want to go over basic white LED shop lights, ratings you need to look for, how much you want to spend, and it's going to save you some money. Now the first thing to mention is we're growing transplants. We're growing vegetables, flowers, herbs, and we're going to be growing them indoors from anywhere from four weeks to six weeks to eight weeks up to 12 weeks. This is just for transplant growing. So the ratings and the light types that I'm going to talk about are for that. Why do I say that? You're going to see very expensive grow lights with red LEDs and blue LEDs that can be $100, $200, $300. You don't need those. The ratings in those lights are more important for growing indoors, for flowering, and for harvesting. So I recommend basic white four foot shop LEDs, just like you see here. We'll talk about that more in depth. You're going to need a place to set up a shelving unit. You don't need all these shelves. We're going to work in this space for this series and everything that you see here, containers, heat mats, we'll be going over. You don't need something elaborate like this. You just maybe need something maybe with two levels. You're going to be able to grow plenty of plants under this. This is the basic LED. You see two rows of lights, white. White light is every color of the spectrum, your plants are going to get everything they need. When you mix together the different colors of light, it looks white. So you have the reds and the blues and the greens in here. So white light is good. The tip that I want to recommend is that you set up your light as high as you can to the shelf under here. And rather than lowering the light down further or raising it up, depending on if your plants are growing, you're going to keep the light stationary and you will raise the seed starting tray closer to the light when you're germinating and then you'll drop it down as the plant grows. That just saves you a lot of time. I use foil sometimes on the opposite sides of the lights to kind of just flap down like that and keep more of the light in. I removed the light that was right here because I needed to replace it. This is a replacement light. Four foot light, you want to get one that has a plug. You don't want to get one that needs to be hardwired into the ceiling or something like that. This is actually probably maybe a five foot cord. Definitely you want to get a three foot cord. You're going to need some extension cords. I do recommend a timer. Just depends on how many lights you're setting up. You want to bring them all down to one side into an extension cord and then you want to use a timer. Lights are going to stay on when your seed's starting, especially for the beginning when you're germinating. You're going to be germinating them in these different containers, in these flats. We'll be talking about those. Please follow this series. We'll be going over everything that you see here. But lighting is something you can buy now. Typically, we won't start really growing until January, maybe February, depending on what you're growing. When your seeds are first planted, so to speak, and you're waiting for them to germinate. You want them to be about two inches close to the light. You want the lights to stay on 12 to 14 hours for that period. After they germinate and they're under the lights for 12 to 14 hours for about a week, you can begin to lower them down. It's really important that the plants, when they break the surface, they're hit by intense light. That's why a south facing window doesn't work. When you're germinating seeds, you need the intense light, so you have to use grow lights. After your plants are growing indoors, maybe four weeks, five weeks, you can move them from here and you can put them by a south facing window, save some space because you've got plants that are growing, they're, you know, feeling like they're getting a lot of love, they're not leggy. What does that mean? 
When you, if you've ever seen it, if you try and grow something by a window, you put a seed in, the plant gets really tall, it falls over, it's leggy, it's because it's stretching for the light. So you really want to set up something like this to get those seed starts the light they need to get started. We're talking about white LEDs that have been around now for 10 years. If you look back there, those are old fluorescent tubes. I've been doing this for 20 years using the white light. This is to save you some money. Certainly the more expensive systems, $100, $200, they work and your plants do look a little bit better. But you don't need it for the seed starts. This is going to cost you anywhere from really now $20 to $30 for a basic four foot white LED shop light. And you're going to look for the ratings on the box. You're going to see two ratings that are important. One is lumens. That's the brightness. You want at least 5,000 lumens. Um, I was just at the store today. I saw the next kind of version of these. They're at 7,000 lumens. So they're even brighter. 5,000 lumens and you want the rating on the box. Sometimes it's in Kelvin. It'll say 6100 Kelvin. That's daylight or it's just going to say daylight. You want Again, 5,000 lumens are higher for brightness, and you want the light to be 6,100 Kelvin, or you want it to say daylight. That basically mimics the sun. This is all you need. Now, I have this set up so that I can put a tray. Let me move this out of the way so it doesn't fall. So that I can put a tray in here just like this. And you can see how the aluminum flap pushes out. The light that I just showed you is going to go right here, and I use two lights, so it's about 50 bucks to set this up. But you can put one flat, two flats, three flats, four flats under here. These are 72 cells. Sell all this at my seed shop if you want to check out the video description. That's over, let's see, over 288 plants that you can get started. And you can do the math. If you're paying three or four dollars a plant, you're saving yourself a lot of money. This is the basic setup that I use. If you're on a budget, you could move this light to the center right here, and you can just put in two trays. And that might be plenty. It might not even be that because it might not even be <laughs> because you're on a budget. It's because you just don't need all those plants. So one tray right here, one tray over there, and that's going to set up the lighting for you. So the questions that I get the most are how close do the plants need to be when seed starting and like I said you're about two inches when you're first germinating and then as they grow you can kind of lower this down and the distance can be greater the most important time is that one week period after germination that you want the plants to hit the light and I mention this again because this is where people make the biggest mistake they break the surface for about a week they get enough intense light so they don't get tall and leggy and flop over this is all you need for lighting. I've been doing this for 20 years. The white LEDs work. You can just see from the side, if you want a quick angle from this way, how I have it set up. One light here, the other light would go right here for four. And if not, you can just put the single light right down the middle. And I have one, two, three, four, five shelving units, still using the fluorescent lights there. That's an older version of LED over there on the left. The system works. This is all you need to grow your own transplants. And please subscribe and follow me because the next thing we're going to be talking about are the different containers. We'll be talking about seed starting mix, watering, feeding, fertilizing, and even the heating mat over there. Thanks for watching my first vegetable garden. And again, please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com. Welcome to my first vegetable garden. In this episode of growing seeds indoors on a budget, we're going to focus on the seed starting mix. How do you prep it? How do you get it into the containers? The first two episodes were all about the lighting and the containers you use for growing your seed starts. I will link them in the video description. So today we're going to talk about the seed starting mix. It's really important that you follow some basic principles to get started so you don't have problems down the line. So let's come on down to here. You can certainly buy your seed starting mix and it's straightforward. It'll say seed starting mix on there. It's usually a combination of peat moss, vermiculite, sometimes a little bit of perlite. You don't have to over worry about that. I'm going to show you how to make it and then I'm going to show you how to set up your seed starting mix. So you can buy it. It can be expensive anywhere from seven to twelve dollars for this 12 quart bag and when you really look at and here I have five tiers going all the way up. 
So in order to buy the seed starting mix, fill everything I need, it's easily going to be 12 to 15 bags of this. At, you know, 8, 10 bucks a bag, it gets really expensive. You can make it much more cheaply. If you don't want to, that's fine. Go ahead and get the seed starting mix. This is what I make. It's really a blend of peat moss and vermiculite. There's a little perlite in there. I'll talk about that, but you don't need that. That can save you some money. Now here's the thing. When you're making it yourself, you want to get that two cubic foot, three cubic foot bag of peat moss from the big box stores. That can cost you anywhere from 15, if you're getting a smaller amount, to $25. It's expensive up front. You can buy vermiculite. I buy mine at Uline, U-L-I-N-E dot com. You can get, get it wherever you want. This is grade one vermiculite. Um, it's very fine. That's what you want. Really small pieces. A bag, four cubic feet, it's going to cost about $60 shipped. That's a lot of money up front. But when you take the four cubic foot bag, the two, three cubic yard bag of the peat moss, two big bags of both, it really makes so much. It's a fraction of the cost at buying it this way. So you do put more money out up front, but you're going to get, seriously, eight, ten times the amount of seed starting material by making it yourself. And I keep it inside. When you buy peat moss, it's dry. This is really important to understand that peat moss when dry is hydrophobic. It means it's, it doesn't want to absorb water. If you make the mix that I'm going to show you, put this into the cells, then add water, this just floats and you have a problem because it can take days before the water seeps in. Vermiculite does pretty good at absorbing water. We're going to do a combination. So how does this work? I take a container, this is considered a part. Doesn't matter if this is a small container or a big container, as long as you use the same measure in both of these, that's considered a part. I take three parts peat moss, three containers full of peat moss, one container full of vermiculite, so it's three parts peat, one part, one part vermiculite, and I just mix it in to the container, mix it through, it's going to be dry, it's going to be hydrophobic. And then let's talk about the next step of hydrating the starting mix and then we'll get to filling the cells in the right way. This is three measures of the peat moss, one measure again of the vermiculite, and it's dusty. Wear a mask if you want to. You probably don't want to be breathing this in. And I just mix it through just real quickly like that. Again, super dry. So if you add water to the dry mix, here's just an example. It's just going to float around on top like that. And you don't want that to happen. It's going to take a long time to absorb. The seed starting mix is going to float. It's going to move around. The seeds can fall down into the containers. All we're really doing is, you know, sort of making a mess. Is that you want to mix the water through your seed starting mix. This is obviously over, overly saturated. I'll show you how we do it in that container. But you want it to be a nice dark brown. Have the peat moss absorb all the water before you put your seeds in, before you pack the cells up. It's still floating. I mean, it's just a mess because that peat moss is, again, hydrophobic. It's not going to absorb the water. Here's a better example of how everything is just floating on the water, and you don't want that. Hydrating the seed starting mix is pretty simple. I'm going to show you how to do that. But I want to talk about boiling water. Any time that you use a peat-based peat moss based product, there's more than a 50% chance at least of getting fungus gnats. Fungus gnats lay eggs in peat moss, gets put into these bags. The bags have a little bit of moisture in there, not enough. You know, you still have to hydrate the soil. The eggs survive. They hatch in your grow room and they're really a problem. So you want to use boiling water. All of my stuff is sterile. I've been taking care of it over the year, so I'm not going to do that today. But in the video description is a link to how to use boiling water to sterilize your seed starting mix. I highly recommend you take, take a look at it. It's going to really save you a huge headache. And that's coming from my main YouTube channel, The Rusted Garden. Now, seed starting mix should be sterile. We're not worrying about so soil life right now. We don't care about the microbes. We do once they get into the garden. But for growing indoors, 6, 8, 10, 12 weeks, 
We just want a, a sterile mix. We don't want fungus. We don't want fungus net eggs. We don't want problems. So you would add boiling water to this, mix it up, it'll get sterilized. All right, so here's the process. You can pretend this is boiling water. It should be hot water. You're just gonna put in a good amount. I used one measure and you're really gonna reach in there and you're just gonna squeeze it and roll it. And you can see that it's getting darker, it's absorbing the water and we just mix this all the way through. And after it's mixed through, it's going to be this nice, dark color. That's what you want. If you squeeze it, no liquid is dripping out. That's kind of the consistency you want for setting up the, the seed starting cells. Now, that's a perfect seed starting mix. Just the vermiculite and the peat moss. This is perlite. You can add some of that in there if you want. It's not necessary. I do that when I'm making a potting up mix, going from the small seed starts into bigger containers. I'll be talking about that in future videos. And if you take a look here, let's bring it up to the light. You can see, this was dry mix, how it's all floating on top of the water. You just don't want that to happen. Not hydrating the mix and not using boiling water really are the number one and two mistake, I guess, of seed starting, getting the mix, the mix prepped. This is what dry mix looks like. So you can kind of see that it's going from this really light color to this nice dark color. All right, here's how you set up the cells for putting your seeds in. Here's a basic six cell. Just gently put in the starting mix, move it across, and then this is really important. You wanna lightly thumb pack it down. You wanna make sure the starting mix gets pressed down to the bottom of the cell. That's how we'll be watering it. I'll show you that in a future video. Water will wick up right from the bottom, keep everything nice and moist, and then you just put some across the top. You create a nice firm base of starting mix for your seeds and that's pretty much it. Let me just show you one for a larger container. Remember for the larger containers that just means you don't have to water it as often. The plants can stay in, stay in there longer and you can grow really most of your transplants to full size using these larger containers. Press it in, make sure the mix gets to the bottom of the cell, cover it over with a little more mix, and then just smooth it out. Sometimes we'll be lightly pressing in the surface, depending on what seed we're starting. That just, again, creates a nice firm base. Other times we'll just drop in the seeds, we'll kind of mix them in, and then we'll come back and we'll press them in. That's the basic setup for getting your seed starting mix made, if you want to make it from scratch getting it saturated so that it's going to hold water. You want it to be nice and dark. Fertilizing, we'll be doing later. I'll show you how to do that. And then you can just set up whatever trays you want, whatever cells you want, and get ready for planting. And they may look something like this. Everything you see growing here has been set up in the way that I'm showing you in this series. And I just set up the cells. These have already been planted. These are four cells smaller six cells, the larger six cells in the back. I get everything prepped like this, and then I put my seeds in. Please subscribe, I'll be doing a whole series on starting seeds indoors, and I'll continue the series for new vegetable gardeners, getting these out into your garden and taking care of them. Thanks so much for watching. Please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com, and check out the other episodes in the video description. Thanks for watching. Welcome to my first vegetable garden. Today's the second episode in starting seeds indoors on a budget. First episode was about the lights, and you can see that the lighting system is working really well. Those are peppers back there. I have all kinds of seed starts uh, germinated and growing, and I'll be talking more about the whole process if you want to follow me for this series. Today I want to just talk about the flats and cells or the containers that you're going to be growing in. First thing that you need is a basic flat. This is called a flat. I sell these at my seed shop. And the cells, the little containers right over there, fit right into a flat. We fill this full of water. We bottom water that way. I'll be talking about that in a future video. Or you can get foil trays at the dollar store, repurpose, reuse them. You just need some sort of container for your flats, your cells to go in so that you can water from the bottom. The basic cells, the inserts, 
look like this. I sell these again, all of them, all of them at my seed shop. This is the basic six cells, and you can get 72 spaces into that black flat that I showed you with these. You can get bigger cells. The larger the cell, the less often you have to water and the less often you have to pot the plant up. And depending on what you're growing and the timing and when it's going outside, you don't want to grow certain seeds in these small cells. You want to grow them in something larger like this. Like I like growing my tomatoes and peppers in these larger cells because I have to water them less frequently. They can get to full size, develop nice root systems, and I just don't have to move them from something smaller into something larger. You can do that if you want, but these are just different examples. 72 planting spaces into a flat when you get these small ones. I think this one might be 20, I'm, I'm sorry, this is 48 spaces in the flat, and then the larger one is 36. What I don't recommend is I don't recommend getting the peat pots. They dry out too quickly, mold grows on the sides. They tell you that when you put this outside, you can just drop in the whole pot. The roots actually do not grow out the side of this. This takes forever to decay. I just don't like them. And the main reason is they just wick the water away from your plant roots. They dry out really quickly. You can use containers like this. This is sold at the seed shop. It's a two and a half inch container. These are great for transplants, but it's also about the same size as a half of a water bottle. So to save some money, you can just cut water, bo water bottles in half. Make sure you put holes in the bottom and you can grow right in the water bottle container. When my friends, neighbors kind of fix up their lawn in the spring, I ask them to hold on to all the containers that they use for their plants that they're buying at nurseries and I repurpose them. So to keep it simple when you first start, maybe you just want to go with the standard smaller cells, 72 per flat. That's a lot of space for growing different plants. And I've been doing that for years and it works. Over time, I've identified, you know, different plants that work better in those four cells. There's the standard six cells. This is how I label them, by the way. I just put masking tape and then the date and what's growing in there. Here are some shishito peppers in the uh, largest cell that I sell. And you can have a mixed flat, some bigger ones, standard sixes, standard fours. All depends on what you want to grow. But again, you can keep it simple and you can just fill a flat up like this. The third video, which will be coming out this week, is on actually making your own seed starting mix. I have my materials in there or purchasing it, but then setting up the flats with your soil to plant. The standard seed starting flats are nice because they can be turned long ways and then you would get two flats in here. That's a lot of plants. You can then also, when the plants get larger, turn them this way. They get enough light. Then you have four flats in there and you're really maximizing the space that you have for growing plants. When I'm germinating, I usually start up here with the lights pretty close to the seed starting mix. And then as they get larger, they'll be working their way down my shelves. And then I will be setting them just like this. Here's a close up of some of the plants that are growing. And one trick is instead of always raising and lowering the lights, you can just raise the lights to the height you want and then you can use books or boxes to raise the flat. That's the other beauty of growing in these flats. You can just lift up the whole tray. Tomatoes in here for a future video. Kale, lettuce, and you can see the different six flats, the fours, the larger sixes. Everything's looking pretty good in there. This one here, just FYI, that cell dried out. That's why they died. The more soil that you have in the containers, the less often you do have to water. You can also grow in Tupperware containers. There's no holes in these, so you have to be careful that you don't over soak the soil and drown your plants. But these are onions. This is a great way to grow onions. I'll be doing future videos on that. And then really in there where we started at the beginning, you can see how nicely the peppers are doing in those large containers. And they will stay in there for 10 weeks or 12 weeks. These are the basic supplies that you need to grow plants. And again, you can buy these whole kits anywhere really, or you can get foil trays, cut up some water bottles, yogurt cups, poke holes in the bottom, and you can just set them up in there. The next step is going to be filling everything with the seed starting mix, getting that set up right, and then planting the seeds. And I'll be going over in the series how to plant the seeds. We'll do cool weather crops first, we'll do herbs and flowers, 
We'll do the warm crops like tomatoes and peppers. This is going to be a series for the next three months. Thanks so much for watching. Hope this gives you some idea of the supplies you need. And, you know, you think about how many plants are you going to put into the garden. If you only need, you know, 24 plants, you can go with these bigger cells, plant up what you want. You have to water them less. They grow nice root systems. They can go right out into the garden. If you need more, maybe you want the smaller cells. Really depends on what you're growing. You don't have to overdo it. And I recommend starting small, maybe with a flat or two, one or two grow lights. See how you like it. And as you get better and you learn, you can expand your grow light station. Thanks so much for watching. Please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com. And please subscribe. I'll be doing a whole series on starting seeds indoors on a budget. Welcome to my first vegetable garden. Today is the fourth episode of growing seeds indoors for new gardeners on a budget. Everything you see has been shown in a series. The growth is going really well. Today I want to talk about watering. Watering is really important, of course, because without it, your plants will die. Now, you can underwater and you can overwater and you can water in a way that splashes disease and spores and fungus around and you can water in a way that makes it more complicated and more time consuming. So I want to show you the easiest way to do it that takes care of all the problems I was talking about. The quickest way to water is to water the bottom of the tray, meaning, and I'm going to give you examples to show you when to water, how you know to water. You fill this tray up, quarter the way with water, set the cells back on. It could be containers, it could be all these seed cells. I sell all these at my seed shop. Just make sure you have holes in the container. When you try and water from the top, not only does it splash everywhere, but the water, when it hits the soil, splashes the soil over to here. The cell floods, water drains over here, and it will just spread problems if you have problems in your soil. When you water from the bottom, everything wicks upward and just gets absorbed into the mix without water washing across to the other cells. We have other plants growing. So we're going to bottom water. Let me show you how to do that and then I'll talk to you about how to identify when it is time to water. In the last episode I showed you how to set up the seed cells for planting. I just set this one up about 15 minutes ago. There's moisture in the seed starting mix. Just grabbed it out of my container. You always want a little bit of moisture in there to start. It helps with the water being wicked up through the seed starting mix. If that was totally dry it's just going to float on the water. So your seed starting mix has to have a little bit of moisture in there. You can see that it's a lighter brown than this tray. This tray I set up yesterday, I actually planted, I bottom watered, and you can see that it's a nice dark brown. That's how you know that your seed starting mix is saturated. So let's pretend that we put some seeds in here. It's ready to go. Again, we don't want to water on the top because it's going to wash water all over the place. Could spread diseases. It's problematic. I like to water. From, by simply just lifting up the cell or your container. This is a half gallon. You want to put in about a quarter inch of water. And we'll check this at the end of the video. I'll, I'll show you how it wicks up. About a half a gallon. I like using milk containers. I use this for fertilizing too. And again, I'll show you how to fertilize these plants in the future. Also show you how to grow everything, how to seed start just about every crop you can think of. Half a gallon or a gallon milk jug. Put the water right into there. Set it back down. And you're just going to wait 15 minutes to a half an hour. This should get nice and dark. If there's any excess water, you want to dump it out. You don't want to leave water sitting in here for small plants. When the plants are bigger, like this, you can leave some water in there. The plants will be able to handle it. But when the seeds are small and there's a lot of moisture in there, a lot of water in there. Sometimes it creates an atmosphere or a, creates an environment for fungus to grow and it can be problematic. But larger plants, it's okay. So you're going to let the water sit in there 15 to 20 minutes. Wait till this gets nice and dark. If all the water is gone and it still looks light like this, you have to add some more water. Here are some plants that have been growing for several weeks. You can see that the starting mix is nice and dark. I just watered these yesterday. In some cases, you may get algae growing, the green algae. That's not really a problem. It's not going to hurt your plants. To help prevent that, you do want a drying out period. So it's really important to understand that once your seed starting mix is soaked, dark brown, absorb the water, it's always going to dry from the top down. So the sunlight evaporation, well, 
the lights, not the sunlight, will help this evaporate and dry. And the top is going to dry and moisture will stay down here. So you want the tops to get to a light brown. That helps reduce mold growth, fungus growth. But after it turns to a light brown, you really have a day or two before you have to water it because moisture stays down here. When you have a larger cell like this, you might be able to go three days or so, maybe a little bit more. When you have smaller cells, one or two days, you want to water. What does that look like? Coming up here, let me pull this down. Here's an example of a flat that's going to need to be watered today. The top is dry. It's a light brown. It goes from that dark color to a light color, and you can see a perfect example right there. Two of them, for whatever reason, had more water in there, stayed a little bit darker. The other two dried out. It's going to transition from dark to something like this, where it's dark and light, and then it's going to be all nice and light. And that's the signal, and that's going to happen over a couple of days. The bigger your plants are, the quicker the starting mix will dry out, depending on how much or how big the cells are and how much seed starting mix is in there. These small cells of six will dry faster than these cells of four, which will dry faster than these large cells of six. Just kind of makes sense. So you're looking for the surface to become a light brown, mostly light brown across. You know, you're going to have to water everything. It's really, you don't have to worry about like taking this one out because it's got water in it. Just generally speaking, water the whole flat. When you pick this up, it's still heavy. So after you water, pick up your cell and you'll feel some weight to it. This way, when the top turns a light brown, you'll be able to still feel the water weight in there and you'll know you have some time before you have to water. If you pick up a completely dry cell, and you can experiment with that, you can make one or let one totally dry out, it's going to be so much lighter than the rest of these, and that's how you know that it's really been missed and that you didn't water in time. So I would just take this, lay it down like I did for that uh, example I showed you in the beginning, fill, fill the flat with water, maybe again quarter depth and let these sit in there add a little bit more if you need to with time you get the in practice you figure it out so you're not really wasting water or having to put more into there and then you just let this sit on a level surface for 15 minutes to 30 minutes and it will resaturate it's all going to become dark like that you may have to do this once a week twice a week three times a week depending on how warm it is in your house how hot the grow lights are how big the plants are but you're always looking for the same clues fully saturated, beginning to dry out on top. You wait a day or two after it dries, like when it goes from here to this to that and it's dry across, you wait a day or two and then you fill it and that's going to be a perfect way to water your plants. It's only been about 10 minutes and you can see the seed starting mix where we bottom watered is already getting saturated. It's getting that nice dark color. Another 5-10 minutes it's going to look just like the seed starting mix from last night fully saturated, good to go. You probably won't have to water this for another five or six days depending on how warm your house is and the temperature of the lights because nothing's germinated. The plants aren't really using the water at this point. I want to show you real quick. If you do try and water from the top, I mean you pretty much have to go like this and go really slowly across. And a lot of times, you know, you can see how the water will flood across if you go too quickly. And that's how you can spread spores and fungus and problems like that. And that's with a pour right out of the container. If you get like a sprinkling can to try and make it more even, then water's getting everywhere and you're dealing with lights and electricity and stuff. I just do really recommend bottom watering. Let's wait a few more minutes for this to totally saturate. It's been about another 10 minutes and the seed starting mix is pretty much the same color as the flat that I did yesterday. I'd wait another 10 minutes. Whatever water's left, I would dump out. That's well saturated, easiest way is to bottom water. Please follow me in this series. I'm not only going to show you how to get everything set up for growing, we're going to go through herbs, flowers, cool weather crops, warm weather crops, and I'll also show you how I take these out into the garden and grow them in the garden. Thanks so much for watching. Please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com and I'm doing a whole series on, on how to start seeds indoors. Keep it simple, keep it on a budget. Thanks for watching. Welcome to my first vegetable garden. In today's episode, episode five of starting seeds indoors for new gardeners and on a budget, we're going to talk about fertilizing your plants. First four episodes, we covered lighting, containers, soil mix, watering. These are the five basic things you need to know to really grow seed starts successfully indoors. 
please subscribe. I'll be going over how to grow herbs, flowers, cool weather crops, warm weather crops for the rest of January, February. The whole key with fertilizers is to not overfeed your plants. If you concentrate too much fertilizer into the little cells of your seed starts, you're going to damage your plants. Too much fertilizer can sometimes make your plants look purple, can create yellow veining, can cause other problems. And what we think right away is there's a nutritional issue that they don't have enough nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. So we give them more fertilizers and then we end up killing our plants. Now, I've been talking about how your seed starting mix should be sterile. There's no soil life in there. I recommend using boiling water to set up your soil so you kill off fungus gnats and any potential problems with eggs being in there. Because there's no soil life, you don't really need to put dry granular fertilizer in there. That's usually the dry organic fertilizers. If you put them in, what they're going to do is they're, they're going to just kind of sit there. They're going to get moldy. They're going to grow fungus. It's not going to hurt your plants, but they're a slow release fertilizer. And soil life has to break that down. Whatever you know, granular bits you're putting into the soil has to be broken down and then the N, P, and K is available to your plants. We're not doing that here. It's perfect for out in the garden, in your containers. For seed starting, I recommend just using a basic water-soluble fertilizer. You can buy organic water-soluble fertilizers, like fish emulsion. I recommend, if you're going to do that, to purchase AgroThrive. It's in my video description. But organic granulars can really smell indoors. And again, because there's no soil life in there, and because the chemical fertilizers, fertilizers that scientists make, people make, they don't harm your plants, they don't harm you. I recommend using a, chem a chemical type water soluble fertilizer. And they look something like this. You can buy, if you don't like the company miracle Grow, you can buy Vigoro, you can buy Plant Expert. These are water soluble. They have usually like a 24 nitrogen, 14, let's say, uh, potassium 16K. That's way too high. The 12, 14, 16 numbers are too high. You want to dilute your fertilizers down, especially the chemical types, by at least a quarter. So what do I mean by that? That's one tablespoon. That's what you use for outdoor gardening. You put one tablespoon into a gallon of water. This is how I fertilize my indoor plants. I take a pinch, you know, just that much. One goes into a gallon of water and then I take a second pinch. This is what I use for when my plants are small. They're just getting started. If they get larger, something like this, then maybe I go to three pinches. That really reduces the strength of the fertilizer. Instead of having a 24, 12, 16 NP and K, it brings it down to well below a 555 NP and K. Perfect number, hard to find. I would recommend three nitrogen, one potassium, one phosphorus. But it's hard to find that. Just dilute your fertilizers down so that they're well below a 555 NP and K. And of course, there's not a gallon of water in there, but I would fill that up to the top. And what I do is when I do my bottom watering, you can check that video out, once a week when they're smaller, maybe when they've been growing for a bit, like right up here, instead of just plain water, I'll put in water with the fertilizer. And that's good for a week. As they get larger, you know, they get to this size, they're growing well, I may do that twice a week. It's going to vary based on the size of your plants, how quickly they drink up the water that's actually in the soil. The key with the fertilizing is that you're giving them less now. And if your plants look like they're struggling, like if they turn a little bit yellow, maybe they're not growing well, they probably need more fertilizer. You didn't over fertilize. So when you see a little bit of yellowing, you can increase the frequency of fertilizing them. Just give them a little bit more. You really, and the key to this whole, the whole use of uh, fertilizers in seed starting is not to over concentrate them in the seed cell. If they get a little bit yellow because they don't have enough nitrogen, you can fix that real easily. The plants recover, but you can't remove fertilizer out of these cells easily if you over concentrate it. Budget wise, you really don't need to put any kind of fertilizers into here if you want to save some money. After the boiling water is in there, 
things have cooled down, you've made a sterile mix. If you want to add something, maybe some worm castings, that's always good for your plants. But it's more of, a, of an expense and you really don't have to do it. I recommend just keeping this as is. And then when you come over to here, get your plant set up, you can slowly start adding in the diluted chemical types of the water solubles. If you're going to use uh, fish emulsion, a lot of them are like a 511 NP and K, that's fine. It is going to smell. The organic type water solubles can create some mold and some growth on the soil because it's organic matter. It has to break down. Again, there's no soil life in there. You might see some fungus, some molds. That's okay. It's not going to hurt your plants. The biggest difference really is the odor. The other benefit of the chemical types is they have everything. They have nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, magnesium, sulfur, calcium, micronutrients, uh, even sometimes vitamins and different things in there. It really gives your plants everything they need to get off to a great start. Once you get out into the garden, switch over to your organic ways. I go to compost and organic fertilizers. I use AgroThrive outside and they're going to do really, really well. Just to be clear too, to give them the fertilizer, just check out the watering video that's in the video description. All the other four videos are in the video description. And you just water them in with the diluted fertilizers and your plants are going to thrive and they're going to look great. Again, please subscribe. I'll be going over everything you see here. How to grow tomatoes, peppers, eggplants, squash, cucumbers, spinach, leafy greens, brassicas, onions, herbs, flowers, all kinds of different crops you can get out into your garden and save some money. This is the cheapest way to grow vegetables as seed starts and then really just have a good experience because you're saving money right off the bat. Everything you see here, just FYI, if I had to go buy this separately, $4 a plant, we're easily talking $150, $200 already spent. This setup, I sell all the stuff at my seed shop, you probably get all the stuff, 40 bucks and you can reuse it year after year. Thanks so much for watching. Please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com and please follow me. I'll show you how to start all kinds of herbs, flowers, and vegetables indoors. Thanks for watching.